Over the years, Square Enix's mobile exclusive titles have often been rather derided by longtime fans of the franchise, and I wouldn't exactly say that I've been too keen on them either. They've often been thought of as lacking in substance, with their main motivation being around exploiting the franchise to try and grab as much money as they can, and part of this reputation is perhaps because they got off on the wrong foot when they released Final Fantasy All the Bravest back in 2013. It was the brainchild of Tetsuya Nomura, and despite not even being free to play, it still had a very strong focus on microtransactions, whilst having almost no substance to try and counterbalance or excuse this. Now, even though Skronix had already released plenty of mobile titles in Japan, this was one of the first that made its way to the Western market with the Final Fantasy brand attached, and it was probably one of the most insulting games Square Enix could have possibly made at that time. As a result, there was considerable backlash from critics and consumers alike. Kotaku, for example, lambasted the money-grabbing nature of the game, and IGN even gave it a 2.5 out of 10, calling it a black mark on the Final Fantasy name. To their credit though, Square Enix took it all on the chin and set about trying to make things better in the future. This saw the creation of three prominent Final Fantasy titles on mobile devices, Final Fantasy Record Keeper, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, and Mobius Final Fantasy. Each of these titles released first in Japan, with global releases following the year after, and they had much more focus on providing nostalgic experiences based on brand new narratives. Record Keeper, for example, follows the story of Tyro as he's looking to try and restore paintings of historical events, while Mobius follows the story of the aptly named Wall, who is trying to forge his own path in the world of Palamecia. Square Enix used these new protagonists to team up with familiar faces of old to create more cohesive experiences that were built more on substance. And although there are similarities between the three of these games, they each seem to appeal to different types of people. I know some people who are extremely passionate about Record Keeper, while others are just more drawn to Brave Exvius or Mobius. The important thing though, is that Square Enix has continued to learn from their past mistakes, both through their own experiences and by working with others. Record Keeper, for example, is a collaboration between Ichiro Hazama's Business Division 4 and DNA. Brave Exvius is a collaboration between Kai Hirono and Hiroki Fujimoto's Business Division 8 and Alien and Gummy, and Mobius is handled internally by Yoshinori Katase's Business Division 1, with serious veterans like Motomo Toriyama and Daisuke Watanabe helping out to steer the project. I've tried each of these games as they released, and the improvements were pretty clear compared to Square Enix's earlier mobile efforts. But while they did exhibit some good qualities, for one reason or another, none of them have retained a permanent place on my mobile device. Whether it was due to confusing interfaces, uninteresting gameplay mechanics, taking up too much space, or just taking too much time between updates, they each ended up drifting outside of my realm of interest. That's not to say though that they don't have massive appeal to other people. Chris, aka Hugathy, who helps out on the channel from time to time, is extremely passionate about Record Keeper. Brave Exvius has even spawned its own conventions due to how huge it's become, and Brayden, our news writer on the main site, absolutely loves Mobius. And outside of these three, Square Enix have also had some, what I'd call, missteps along the way too. These unfortunately all seem to really tie into the Final Fantasy XV universe, games like Justice Monsters 5, which has already been cancelled, King's Knight Wrath of the Dark Dragon, which had to go through a huge renovation due to such negative player feedback, and Final Fantasy XV A New Empire, which having been outsourced to Machine Zone, doesn't really bear any real relation to the Final Fantasy franchise outside of the fact that they use its name. It means that, yeah, they've done lots of experimentation, which brings me on to Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, a game that I feel acts as the culmination of Square Enix's mobile efforts to date. It was released in Japan just over a year ago as a collaboration between Ichiro Hizama's BD4 and Team Ninja, and has just recently made its way to the West to help support the release of Dissidia Final Fantasy NT on the PlayStation 4. And honestly, 
I've really been enjoying it so far, to the point that I've probably been playing it more than I have Dissidia NT. I actually felt quite strange and somewhat guilty about this, especially as I've been quite sceptical of Square Enix's mobile games, and because I was rather excited for Dissidia NT, but from our recent poll, it doesn't look like I'm alone in this regard. Sure, there are still lots more people who are enjoying NT, but pre-launch, I would not have expected so many people from within our core fanbase to be enjoying Opera Omnia as much as they are. I think part of this is that Opera Omnia just seems to get it. And by that, I mean it delivers the kind of celebration experience that I want from a Final Fantasy game. Unlike the three previous mobile successes, this isn't a fresh new protagonist leading the way, as Opera Omnia instead follows a similar narrative to what we've seen in other Dissidia titles. Characters from their respective wider universes are summoned into a new world, and in this specific story, the Warriors of Light are looking to help the goddess Materia close up torsions that are threatening to destabilize the world while the antagonists are trying to use them for their own personal gain. But the important thing is that while it isn't exactly the most riveting of storylines, the characters behave in ways that I'd expect, and that's something that I can very much appreciate. I've enjoyed playing through the side quests where you unlock new characters, if only to see how they interact with the other characters, especially those from their own universe. Likewise, I've really enjoyed seeing the parlays between the antagonists and the protagonists. The writers just really seemed to understand what actually drives these characters, and as a result, their lines of dialogue portray their personalities so accurately. The other big thing for me is just the diversity of the cast. Yes, you've of course got the top tier characters like Cloud Strife and Squall Leonhardt, but Opera Omnia also gives screen time to other characters like Steiner, Vivi, Rem, Hope, and even Seymour. And based on what's happened so far in the Japanese version of the game, things are only going to get way more expansive, as they've even delved into the realm of Crystal Chronicles. It's a huge selling point for me, as there are some smaller characters who I really adore, and in the majority of other Final Fantasy tribute games, they get almost no screen time as they aren't considered a big enough draw. It's something that fans have very much taken to as well, as even though not every character is a world beater in terms of what they bring to the table from a gameplay perspective, that hasn't stopped people from maxing them out and being extremely proud about it. For example, one of our community members called Masalento is unashamedly a Steiner fan, and over Reddit, they very much appreciated the commitment to this within the confines of Opera Omnia. Through the introduction of these characters, we've also had the opportunity to relive some classic moments, albeit in Opera Omnia's newfound style, like Seafur squaring off against Squall and Terra's conflict with Kefka. Seeing how these characters then perform in battle is just the icing on the cake. We saw a new iteration of turn-based combat in World of Final Fantasy, but I think the integration of Dissidia's classic bravery and HP attacks into Opera Omnia helps to freshen things up quite a bit. Although they were developed with real-time action in mind, they are very well suited to the turn-based environment and help to make things way more strategic, especially with things like co-op battles. When you add in summons, chain attacks, and the possibilities around breaks, you've got a rich gameplay experience that I wouldn't mind seeing developed further with non-mobile titles. I've also been really impressed by how they've managed to dial back the microtransactions and make everything much more subtle. They are definitely still there, but the way they've chosen to handle them is such a huge step in the right direction for promoting engagement and continued play which has helped to build community. You now have the option to do an unlimited number of standard story quests every day, with limits only applying to quests that have the purpose of upgrading your characters and summons at faster rates. For example, quests relating to the world of illusions have time caps, while quests relating to crystal farming are only allowed to be undertaken 10 times per day. But with character related quests and co-op quests also happening outside of the standard story quests, it strikes up just the right balance to keep you engaged while you wait for more content to come. And that in itself is something that's rather crucial. There are always going to be content lags with mobile games of this nature, so keeping players engaged becomes so important. 
and I've been happy with everything they've done so far, as well as how they've dealt with maintenance, balancing, and giving back to the community by rewarding patience and their general support for the game. So yeah, to summarize, I am really liking Opera Omnia so far, and with new content being added all the time, things are looking pretty rosy for the game at the moment. But how many of you guys have managed to check out the game so far? And if you have done and have stuck with it, you should definitely check out our Discord server. I'll throw a link in the description. We've got a ton of people talking about their progress and strategies on there. I'll also throw my ID into the description too alongside Lauren's, so you can follow us in the game if you like. Be also sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this little confessional video and subscribe to our channel for more Final Fantasy content. Also, if you'd like to get yourself entered into our upcoming mega prize draw, why not also consider becoming a Patreon supporter? Outside of getting it into the prize draw, you can also suggest videos for us to cover, get some merchandise related to the channel, and get your name posted at the end of videos like these awesome folks. Alright guys, my name is Daryl, I am really enjoying the City of Opera Omnia, and I'll hopefully see all of your characters within the game. Catch you soon for more Final Fantasy videos.